This question appeared on a video that was answering a previous question about how to copy sheets from multiple Excel files into one single workbook. The end result of that video was a workbook that contained multiple worksheets because the sheets we were copying all had a different structure. In this case, however, the user wants to be able to copy sheets that have the same data structure into one single worksheet. So we want to create one single gigantic table from multiple separate Excel files. To show you how I'm going to demonstrate that, I'll just show you this blank Excel workbook that I've created. I've saved it as a macro enabled workbook and I've saved that in a folder which also has a subfolder called My Files. And inside there are several different Excel workbooks, each with a list of films made in a particular year. If I double click on any one of those at random, the structure of each file is the same, but we've got a limited list of films in there. We want to put them all together into one single list. The first thing I'd like to do is write some code to loop over all of the movie files in the My Files folder. Let's head into the Developer tab and open up the Visual Basic Editor, and then we can insert a new module into the project, and I'll create a subroutine called Get All Movies. Now, normally if I'm working with files and folders, I tend to set a reference to the Microsoft scripting runtime. But here, because I'm not really manipulating those files and folders, all I care about doing is extracting their names. It's probably easier to use the dir or directory function. So what I'm going to do is start by declaring a variable, which I'll call movie file name, and this will be a string. And then what I'm going to do is change the current directory to point to the My Files folder in the same folder as this workbook that I'm writing my code in. So I'm going to do that using the chdir function, change directory. And the path will be this workbook.path. And then I can concatenate to the end of that the literal string backslash my files backslash. What I can then do is capture the first file name in that folder by saying movie file name equals and then use the dir function. Now if I just want to find the first file of any type, I can pass an empty string to the first parameter of the directory function. I need to open up some parentheses to do that and then type in double quotes, double quotes and then close the parentheses. I can then say debug.print movie file name and when I execute that subroutine, you'll see that the first file of any type with any name gets returned as the file name to that variable. I've got a couple of other choices for ways I can do this. By the way, if I wanted to make sure I was limiting this to just um, Excel files or XLSX files at least, I can write some patterns, some wildcard patterns. So I can say asterisk.xlsx. So any file whose extension is XLSX, that would avoid inadvertently opening up Word documents or attempting to open up Word documents as a, as a workbook later. Um, but the end result of this will be the exact same thing, movies2000.xlsx. Now, of course, I don't want to do this just for one single file. I want to continue listing out file names until I can't find any more. To do that, I'm now going to add a do until loop. So I'm going to say do until movie file name equals an empty string. The first thing I'll do inside the loop is print out the movie file name. And then what I'm going to do is attempt to capture the file name of the next file in that same folder using the directory function again. So I'm going to say movie file name equals dir. This time I'm not going to pass any values to any of its parameters. And as long as I don't pass any new parameter values to the directory function, it will continue using the same search pattern, but just moving on to the next folder, sorry, the next file in that folder. Finally, I need to loop back to the top of that to check that I've returned another file name. So when it doesn't return any more files, you'll get an empty string returned by the directory function. So if I just clear the contents of the immediate window and then run that subroutine again, I get a list of all of the Excel files in that folder. Next, I'd like to add the code that will open up and then close down each of the workbooks in that folder. And to do that, I'm going to declare a new variable, which will hold a reference to a workbook object. So I'll call this one movie file as workbook. Inside the loop, then, I'm going to just below my debug.print statement, but before I try to capture the next file name, I'm going to say set movie file equal to workbooks.open. And then I can pass in the file name that I want to open. So all I'm going to do here is pass in a reference to my movie file name variable. 
I don't need to pass in the full complete file and folder path here. I've changed the directory to look in the correct folder in the first place. So as long as I provide a valid file name, that file will be opened up. Of course, we're going to do some things with that file in terms of finding and copying all of the data out of it. But the end result is that I don't want that file left open. So before I try to capture the next file name, I'll say moviefile.close. And just to demonstrate that this does indeed work, I'm just going to comment out my debug.print statement. And it may take a little while for it to run, but you should see each of those movie files opening up and closing down in rapid succession. So that part's working pretty nicely. There we go. Next, let's deal with copying the data out of each workbook that we've opened up and pasting it into a new worksheet. I'm going to create that new worksheet in the current workbook. So I'm going to declare a variable for that. Let's call it output sheet as a worksheet. And then before we begin looping through our files, I'm going to say set output sheet equals this workbook dot worksheets dot add. Each file that I open up, I know that it's only got one single worksheet in it. And I know that the data in that worksheet starts in cell A1. So I'm kind of assuming some things here, but I, I, these are pretty safe assumptions. I made the files. I kind of know how they're constructed. So once I've opened up the movie file, I'm going to say movie file dot worksheets one. Of course, each worksheet in the workbook has a different name. So they're named for the year that the movie was made in. So if I refer to worksheet one by its index number, then that's always just the first and only worksheet in that workbook. Then I can refer to the range A1 object in there, and then the current, uh, current region property of that range object, and then apply the copy method to it. Once I've done that, I would like to paste that set of data to the end of the current list in my new worksheet that I've just created. Now, this is something that's it's caused problems in several videos that I've made previously. This question pops up quite a lot. Normally, to find the bottom of a list, if you have a list in your data already, if I just type in some values here, A, B, C, if I refer to cell A1 and then say, go to the end of that list in a downwards direction, and then one cell further down from there, you invariably end up in the next available blank cell. Of course, if you're starting with a completely empty column, a completely empty workbook, if I do control down arrow for end Excel down, I end up at the bottom of the worksheet. And if I try to offset one row beyond that, I cause a runtime error. So a slightly better solution is to go from the very bottom of the worksheet upwards and then one row back down. Now, no matter how many, how many cells are populated in that uh, worksheet already, that will always find the next available blank cell at the bottom of the list. It will be quite perfect in this first little run through of the, the test, but it's, it's, it's this, the, um, the technique I'm going to use uh, for the rest of the video. So I'll get it set up now. So back in the Visual Basic Editor, having copied the data from the workbook, I'm then going to say output sheet dot range a 1,048,576. And of course, that by itself could cause problems. So if I'm working in a legacy version of Excel, there aren't that many cells in the worksheet. But I know that I'm working in the current version of Excel, so I'm going to stick with that for now. And then say end Excel up dot offset 1 comma 0, and then use the paste special method. What I'm then going to do just before I close down the file, when you copy a large amount of data to the clipboard and then you try to close down the file, you'll often get a warning popping up asking you, do you want to save all the data that's in the clipboard for use later on? I can suppress that message in a couple of ways, but a relatively straightforward way to do it is to say application dot cut copy mode equals false. Just hit escape to ignore the IntelliSense list that pops up. So that effectively clears the clipboard before the file is closed down. OK, having added all of that extra code, let's just run it at this point and we'll see our workbooks getting um, opened up. And when they've all finished, we ought to end up with on our new worksheet in my new workbook. So we've got sheet two. We should end up with, I agree, it's not ideal, it's not perfect yet, but we definitely have a different set of data from different years. If I widen column C, that would be a little more obvious. So the file, the, the code is working. We're getting our list. It just needs a little bit of extra work to tidy it up. 
So there are two problems with the solution that we've come up with so far. The really obvious one here is that we've got the column headings repeated for each set of data that we copy into this new worksheet. I'd like to solve that one first of all. The way I'm going to solve this is by resizing the selection. If I just open up one of these extra workbooks, just to demonstrate what I mean by that, the current region property, if I refer to cell A1 and press Control and A, that highlights the entire block of data to which cell A1 belongs. What I'd like to do is resize this block of data so that it doesn't go for every single row. It goes for one row less than that. So I'm going to first of all resize the block of data so that it's one row less in height than the entire block of data. And then I'm going to shift that entire selection down by one row so that what we end up with is just that block of code selected. There are alternative ways to do this, by the way. I'm sure you can think of several if you've watched many of the other videos in the VBA series. One simpler way to, to do this would be to start in cell A2 and then end Excel down from there and then end Excel to right from there. And that would capture the full range of data as well. That technique, however, is prone to errors when you have blank cells in the data. So I'm not confident that every single value has been, every single cell has a value in it. So I'm going to avoid any potential problems for, uh, caused by blank cells by using the technique I've just described. So to make that work, going back to the VB editor, I'm going to declare a variable just to help myself out. I'm going to say dim copy range. If I could spell copy, that would help. Copy range as range. And the first thing I'm going to do before copying my data, so let's just take the copy method off there, the end of that line. I'm going to say set copy range. I'll get there eventually. Set copy range equals movie file dot worksheets one dot range a one dot current region. So that sets the starting point. Now I'd like to refer to the copy range and I'd like to resize it. So I can apply the resize property to the copy range and then set a new row size and optionally a new column size as well. The column size is going to stay the same, but the row size needs to be one less than the number of rows in the copy range. So I'm going to refer to the copy range, to the rows collection or the rows property, and then the count of rows and simply subtract one from it. I don't need to resize the columns. I could if I wanted to, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to close the round brackets. And then once I've resized that range, I'm going to shift the selection down by one row by using the offset property. So I can say dot offset one comma zero. So one row down, zero columns to the right. Then I can apply the copy method to that selection and that guarantees that I don't get the column headings. So another quick check that that part's working, that should solve the problem of at least having the duplicated column headings in there. Again, it won't be perfect just yet, but we're getting closer. And the end result of all this, when we look back, is our set of data with no extra column headings in it, but sadly, no column headings at all. So that's the next problem to solve. To get the column headings in the first row of our output sheet, what I'm going to do is check if I'm looking at the first file in the My Files folder, and if so, copy the entire first row from that file into the first row of my output sheet. Again, I've got lots of different options for, for the way I can do this. A nice, simple and convenient way to do it is to create a variable which acts as a flag to tell me whether or not I'm looking at the first file. So I'm going to do that by saying dim first file and then set the data type of this variable to be boolean so that's can, that can hold a value true or false before i begin looping then i'm going to set the first file variable to hold a value of true and then once i've opened up the first file i'm going to check if first file then when you're working with boolean values by the way writing if statements like this is identical to saying if first file equals true. The equals true part is not necessary to check if the value of a Boolean variable equals true. I'll add the end if just to close that off. And then if I am on the first file, I want to do these things. I want to say movie file dot worksheets one dot range a one dot entire row dot copy 
entire row is a little bit excessive, but um, it guarantees we get every single value, um, no matter how big the, uh, the list is. I could then do a separate paste special or with the copy method, I've got an optional destination parameter. And what I'm going to do is just quickly refer to output sheet dot range a one. Now that I've done that for the first file, I need to make sure that each subsequent file doesn't think it is the first file. So to make that work, I'm going to say first file equals a false. So just change the flag to false. So that guarantees it only happens for the first file that we're looking at. So having done that, let's just run the subroutine again. Sorry, I should have picked a smaller range of files so it didn't take quite as long, but I guess it's kind of satisfying to know that it's going to work with a large number of files as well. So the end result, when I get back to Excel, there we go. I've got my fourth worksheet and this time I do indeed get my column headings sitting in the top row. So that's basically the entire system working. Apart from the extra bells and whistles, we could add a few extra bits of code maybe to make sure that we end up in cell A1 and maybe make sure that we have all the columns the correct width. We could disable screen updating to try, get, try to get a bit of extra performance. So let's just do a couple of these basic things. I'm going to head back to the top of this subroutine and say application dot screen updating equals false. Then at the end of the subroutine, after I finish looping, I'm going to say output sheet dot range a one dot select, just to make sure I end up at the top of the top of the list. And then I can say output sheet dot range a one dot current region dot entire column dot auto fit. So I'll try to make all the columns the correct width. And then finally, application dot screen updating equals true. So having done all of that, what we can do is run the whole thing one more time. Maybe I'll just quickly tidy up actually and get rid of these extra worksheets. So we end up with just one single output sheet at the end. Maybe we could add a button to our sheet one as well. Let's insert a basic form control button while we're here. Why not? Buttons are always fun. And I can add my get all movies subroutine to that and then change the text to say get all movies. OK, so having clicked away from the button, the moment of truth, if we click the button, we see very little screen flickering going on. The, the title bar is flickering a little bit, but at least we're not seeing the individual workbooks open up and close down again. So we get a bit of extra performance from that. And we get a lovely, beautifully laid out final table containing all of the films from all of those files. So I think that hopefully answers the original question. Um, if not, then do feel free to let me know in the comments and uh, I can try and help out some more. Can't promise a video response to every single question. Um, <laughs> these do take a bit of time to create, but I'll do my best to keep up with the questions you guys ask. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time.